I'm going to be cooking all of this food today and I'll be doing it in a Ninja Foodie Air Fryer dual zone. The idea of this machine is that you can cook different foods in the different compartments and still get great air frying results. This is my unboxing video and initial impression. Let's begin. So here is the unboxing for the Ninja Foodie Dual Zone Air Fryer. It has a 7.6 litre capacity and you can cook two different types of food in the two different zones that they've given you, as you can see. It says that you can cook up to 75% faster than fan ovens with up to 75% less fat. You have customizable programs, as you can see, including a dehydrate, which uh, seems quite interesting. And it says here that each of the drawers fit up to one kilo of fries. It has an auto adjust fan, max crisp technology for crispier results and variable temp control. Here is the top of the box and it says that it's a 2470 watt unit with up to 240 degree cooking temperature. It comes included with two crisper plates, cooking programs as mentioned earlier and a chef created recipe guide. Using the dual zone technology it has a feature where you can sync and match so you can put the food in there the two different kinds of food and then when you're finished when they're both finished they'll finish it at the same time included inside the box is your quick start guide instructions and in here you have the recipes. This is what the air fryer looks like in the box. This is what it looks like outside the box and it looks to me like it's very big, very big unit. Um, we took measurements of it go and buy the online specification, but in real life, it still looks bigger than that. For reference, here is my induction hob, and it's taking up quite a lot of that space. So I think it's uh, just a bit bigger than expected, but still quite nice. You still have the stickers on the front of the unit, which tell you how to use the dual zone technology and the sync feature so you can sync up your food cooking times. Looking inside the trays, this is tray number one. This is tray number two, which is quite nice. Here is tray number one. There's something in there. And this here is tray number two, which is pretty much identical. And again, there's something in there. Let's find out what that is. So it seems that all this is, it's just some protective packaging. It doesn't look like it does anything. First impressions of the tray is that it's quite good. It fits quite nicely. I think that they could have put a stop here because it just wants to kind of come out. There could have been a way you could 
make it stop and then like you push a button or something like there and then it releases it and then you take it out that might have been nice but hey I think if we do it on the other side it's kind of the same, the same deal looking at the trays in more detail these are removable I guess it's so you can put stuff your food on top of there and then it aids circulation by allowing air to heat your food from the bottom looking in the quick start guide it says for best results to use the crisper plate which I showed you earlier because it gives you um, I guess crispier food and here it recommends to shake or toss the food in the baskets frequently or with silicon tipped tongs to get it even crispier so here is where it's explained the difference between the sink and the match functions the sink function should be used if you're cooking two different uh, foods and you want them to finish at the same time whereas the match function is if you're cooking the same food in each zone so you're using zone 1 and zone 2 and you basically want it to match zone 1 and 2 together you can also cook two foods and do them independently so you don't have to use the sink feature so they can finish at different times if you use one of the drawers so like for example draw one that's absolutely fine you just fill it like a normal air fryer and you just program it and uh, basically you can use one at one time included in the guide is an air fry cooking chart so basically it's telling you all the different types of foods that are compatible with the unit and how to prepare them as well so this one for, for example here it says for Brussels sprouts 500 grams cut in half stem removed and then in oil one tablespoon recommended temperature 200 degrees cook time 15 to 20 minutes so you have all this here you have vegetables you have the poultry you have uh, fish and seafood let's turn the page see if there's any more you have frozen foods fresh lamb pork beef and yeah for you actually have a max crisp cooking chart as well which is ideal for frozen foods which we're going to test thoroughly in the reviews to come so here are just some of the foods that they're giving some recommendations on here is the dehydrate chart so one one day I'm going to try that too and do, do a review on that fresh meat poultry for dehydrating you can do that as well well wow. it's really good probably good for uh, I think if you can do that for beef jerky that would be very good actually and this here is different recipes they've given you here so for example french fries air fry 200 degrees 20 minutes this part of the guide is where you'll find the different recipes so the first one you get is hunters barbecue chicken and chips chicken fajitas spicy roast potatoes spicy Italian hot dogs peppers and onions sweet potato sausage hash so there's quite a lot I mean this goes on for quite long so perhaps I'll make a separate video about everything that you can do and maybe I'll make a few of these recipes as well and make a video on that 
it says here that for more recipes you can go online to ninjakitchen.co.uk and they'll give you some more recipes there so this is the first time I'm going to be using this machine I used a Philips air fryer years ago this was back in 2011 2012 time and uh, that was a lot smaller than this one but there were some good results from that but this is what I'm going to cook today for the first time so it's boneless chicken wings breaded garlic mushrooms and some Cajun onion rings. I'm not going to put any vegetables in there today because we have a salad prepared and that should be enough. So as mentioned before from my previous experience with a Philips air fryer these sorts of machines they tend to work very well with frozen foods because I found that they cook in much uh, a much shorter time and you get a way crispier coating from these sorts of machines much more crispy than anything else pretty much except for deep frying so as we are doing boneless chicken wings I'm gonna be looking here which is uh, wherever that is we've got chicken wings there it reckons one kilo it can do it in 17 minutes it reckons obviously no preparation because it's frozen it reckons to toss it in oil one tablespoon of oil next one is the, uh, the Cajun onion rings so there's the onion rings there 300 grams it reckons no preparation no need to toss in oil and nine minutes so this one here this one could go in for example drawer number two and this one here could go in drawer number one then we'd set the time for I think the chicken wings was 17 minutes and for the onion rings we could set for nine minutes now the only problem is the garlic mushrooms because now where do we put that do we cook these separately and then cook these again separately or do we mix the garlic mushrooms with the onion rings so now do I maybe need three drawers I don't know but let's try and find a solution so I've now inspected what the producer of these frozen goods are recommending for the cooking times for the garlic mushrooms and the onion rings right so this one here reckons that it, under normal obviously oven conditions 200 degrees 15 to 18 minutes for the breaded uh, mushrooms and the onion rings oven fan 200 degrees so the same temperature but they're recommending 20 minutes so these should take three no two to five minutes longer than these I think for the purpose of this test what we're going to do is we're going to cook the onion rings separately and we're going to cook the garlic mushrooms separately because we want to see what this air fryer can do under optimal conditions so we're going to give it the chicken wings in drawer one and we're going to give it the onion rings in drawer number two then we're going to press the sink button and see if it all works once that food is done we're then going to move on to the garlic mushrooms as these take the least amount of time they said on the back here 15 to 18 minutes so in air fryer world if we go back to the onion rings for reference nine minutes it would take for onion rings and these are meant to be done quicker than that so I think that these can probably get done in about seven minutes in this air fryer so we're going to test that 
because I think this is a typical situation. I think a lot of people are gonna have this problem because sometimes even two isn't enough if you want sides as well. So let's see how it works out. It's worth mentioning that before using this air fryer for the first time, it's probably a good idea to give it a wash before you use it for the first time. So I'm gonna do that first. And also let's not forget that because we are using the frozen food in this test and because air fryers are excellent for max crisp, we're gonna use the max crisp function. So the max crisp function is here. This is the button we're gonna press. And when you press that, there is no temperature adjustment available or necessary when using the max crisp function. So basically it's saying that this unit it knows what to do when you press that button. It's gonna try and get all this stuff as crispy as possible and nice as possible. And basically it's just a auto, you know, this is what you'd press in an auto environment. So let's give it a go. Please remember to wash your hands. So if you remember earlier, the recipe actually called for oil to be put onto the wings, right? So basically the way that I've done this in the past with the Philips air fryer is just got a bowl like this, put your stuff in it and then get your tablespoon of oil, go like that, just give it a shake, which I'm gonna do in a minute when I've not got the camera in my hand. And then basically you get an even coverage of oil and then you put it into there. Another way you could do it, having thought about it, another way you could do it is you get one of these brushes. These like This is a silicon uh, brush and you could basically use the oil and just brush it on. And that way you could actually do it inside the unit. Because if you put it in here now, you're not gonna get an even coverage with a spoon. And the oil is probably gonna leak down into there. If you use this, then you're gonna avoid that problem. Or if you put it into a bowl, like I just shown you, and mix it, then you'll avoid that problem as well. So here we are, we're basically ready to go. Here are the chicken wings. The recipe in the book called for a kilo. We don't wanna eat that much. This is 800 grams, okay? So we're gonna see if this works. Here are the onion rings. The recipe in the book called for 300 grams, I think it was. And that's 300 grams right there. Bang, right, so now we just wanna press, I believe, sink. No, we don't wanna press that. We wanna press max crisp. Am I right? Yes, we are. And the next thing to do, can I work it out, is to press the time. I believe that's probably the right thing to do. There you go, and it said 17 minutes, yeah? 17 minutes. So now we wanna do start, I think. And, okay, here's number two. So number two, we wanna do max crisp as well, don't we? So, as it's now flashing, we wanna do that for nine minutes, is that right? It, it was nine minutes for the onion rings, so now we can press start. Is it gonna work? Are we in business? Are we in business? Ah, all right, okay, this is the mistake I've made, okay. Number one, okay, Max Chris, these are buttons, I didn't even realize that. Number one, 240 degrees, that's the Max Chris mode. Then we adjust the time, that makes sense. It was 17 minutes for the wings, click start. And then we're gonna go to number two, we're gonna press that button. And I guess we press max crisps, crisps to say that we're gonna do that as well. And then we're gonna click nine minutes. That's how we do it. And then we're gonna make sure it's pressed to sync, which it is, oh, no, now it is. And then we're gonna press start and then, ah, there we go. So now, as you can see, it's starting the left-hand side, number one, and 
the right hand side is saying hold okay so there's nothing nothing going on in here at the moment and then on this side we've got some action so it's been some time now as you can see it's almost been five minutes so the what's this thing called again it's called a, a manual right a guide there you go quick start guide this thing said that we should shake it quite often so that's what I'm gonna do here we go let's give it a shake So here we go, this is the moment of truth. At nine minutes, that side should begin. So let the countdown begin. There we go. I'm very, 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 very impressed right now. This is quite amazing actually because syncing up food when you do it yourself is, uh, is it can be quite stressful if there's a group of people waiting for you and judging you and your performance even if you're cooking frozen food so that is very very nice indeed ah we have to shake again let's do another shake go and that's that done too so only six minutes to go and it's time we do some shaky business with the onion ring <laughs> I think that's gonna work, but let's give it a go anyway. Three minutes to go, so let's do another shake. Oh, these are getting good now. Yeah, these are getting good, all right. bit worried about these onion rings they're gonna split or something so I'm gonna do it for these as well so this is where there'd be it would be nice to have a stop function there but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do what it said and remember the silicon tongs so here's the silicon tongs yeah so as you can see at the bottom they're not quite as well done as the top there is a bit of a difference so let's that will do. Let's whack it back in. And that should be enough until the end. So we are now done. That's the chicken wings. That is the onion rings right there. So garlic mushrooms are about to go in. So as it's going into number two, I think we should click number two. There we go. Let's try a max crisp. There wasn't actually a max crisp for garlic mushrooms, but we said we're gonna do it seven minutes for, the, uh, for those. But actually here, it also recommends that garlic mushrooms can be done 190 degrees for 10 to 12 minutes. So I'm gonna try the max crisp mode and just see, let's see if it turns out all right. So as we said before, uh, oh no, we've got to do that. Max crisp and then 
we do the time. That was it, wasn't it? And then seven minutes we said. And I think we can press start. Yeah, see now, number two is on on its own. So this brings me to the next point. So because I didn't want to put the food onto the plate yet because it's going to get cold, I transferred the onion rings over to this compartment. So they're sitting now with the with the chicken uh, wings. And yeah, so basically the reason for that, like I said earlier, was so they can basically keep warm while these mushrooms are being done. Now this I think could be a weakness of this machines because what, what they could do, I think, all these functions, right, they've got all these functions but one function that really would be actually very nice is a keep warm function and I could have pressed a button that said keep warm and then that would have just been you know at a low temperature not cooking anymore but just keeping them at a decent temperature that would be really nice there is a reheat function but I don't really want to wait for them to get cold and then reheat them um, so yeah if you're watching ninja guys um, yeah that would be really nice unless you already have it and I've missed it so I'll double check and we'll see if I'm wrong then I'll update it Check the mushrooms, Let's give them a little shake. There we go. Back in they go. So I've just checked these, I've just checked them, and basically they're going a little bit soggy. Okay, so I'm gonna try that reheat function. Uh, press number one, is that right? Reheat. Uh, just a minute let's say a minute I wonder if it will help and then start there we go so the mushrooms have now ended these are being reheated right so here is everything breaded mushrooms, Cajun onion rings, and the star of the show, the chicken wings, and some general salad over here. To finish it off, we've got the buffalo sauce. We're gonna just put that on now. Don't spit it. It's hard when you've got a camera in your hand. And there we go. And that is the final product. If you want to see how it tasted, please tune in to my next video. Hehehehe <laughs>